If you've been following me on here for a while, then you'll know that I've recently bought a new house and that I intend to turn it into the best dang smart home that ever was. The first thing I did when I moved in was sort out my internet and network access, which was the topic of a previous video. But as I mentioned there, a great home network does not make a smart home. A smart home consists of all sorts of sensors and gadgets that you can use in automations to do things automatically. A simple example is turning on some lights when motion is detected and then turning them off again when you leave the room. A more complicated automation could be making a light in your kitchen green when the washing machine has finished so that you remember to empty it out before the clothes get all stanky. To make these automations, you need some sort of smart home controller, or hub as they are also sometimes called. You connect all of your devices to this hub, and then the hub becomes the controller or the brains of your automations. There are a lot of different hubs on the market at the moment, including some from the big players like Apple, Google, Amazon, and Samsung. And you've also got some hubs made by some of the smaller players in the market, like SwitchBot, Akara, Zemismart, and so many more. I was doing some research about smart hubs recently and came across this guy's smart home tour video on YouTube and in it he started talking about his own smart home hubs. Let's start out this video by talking about the numerous hubs that live in this house and we have one, two, three, four, five of them to go through. Five hubs in one house. That is madness. Every single one of them supports a different set of devices in a different ecosystem with a different username and password and probably a different smartphone app to control it all. Does he then need to connect all of those hubs together to an Amazon Echo or Google Home so they talk to each other like some sort of super hub? I am not going to be installing five hubs in my house. I just want to install one hub that does everything, that can talk to all of my devices, that has one single smartphone app to control everything, no matter who made the smart devices. And speaking of matter, I want the hub to support that new smart home protocol as well. Does such a thing exist? Of course it does. I talk about it all the time. Let's take a look. I am, of course, talking about Home Assistant. It's my favorite home automation platform by far. And in this video, I'm gonna explain why I love it and how you can get started using it in your own home. So why Home Assistant? Is Home Assistant the best home automation hub or system out there? Well, I think so, but I've not personally tried all of them and it may not be right for you. If you've already got a bunch of iPhones, Apple TVs and iPads, then I'd probably suggest you look at the Apple ecosystem HomeKit first. If you're already using a bunch of Amazon Echo devices or Samsung equipment, then I'd suggest starting with their own ecosystems. But don't go with Google. I generally love Google products and services, but their smart home platform needs a lot of improvement before it's up to the level of some of their competitors. Anyway, before I moved into this house, I wrote down a list of all the requirements I had from a smart home platform. Firstly, I want my smart home to work entirely locally without needing a working internet connection or some sort of cloud login account. Secondly, it needs to work with a wide range of smart devices. I don't want to be limited to buying specific vendors smart home products. I mean, just look at all this shiny fun stuff you can buy on AliExpress. I want to be able to use all of this if I so choose. And finally, I want it to be future proof. I don't want to have to rip out everything and start again when a new standard like Matter comes along or when a smart home company unexpectedly goes out of business or discontinues a product line leaving all of their customers with bricked devices. Home Assistant does all of these things, and the software that controls it all is completely free. Why is it free? Because it's open source software, which means it's been created by literally thousands of developers who donate their time and skills to make the platform better for everyone. Open source is great for another reason too. It means that people create integrations and plugins for almost any smart home device imaginable. This community of developers also fixes any bugs in the software that are found, and connections to third-party systems. At the time of recording this video, there are over 2,000 different integrations to different smart home products and services that are compatible with Home Assistant and work directly out of the box. Every single month, a new version of Home Assistant is released for free that contains all of the latest updates, fixes, and integrations to new smart home products out there. I believe that this open source community will give the software more resilience too meaning that it will work long into the future as long as there are developers out there who are passionate about smart home technologies and making the platform better for everyone. 
Linux is a perfect example of open source software, and it was first released in 1991. For three decades, it has been constantly improved and built upon by a similar open source community, and it's still definitely going strong. But there is also some criticism around Home Assistant. Some people are concerned that a constantly changing platform made by who knows who is difficult to learn, and that you need to be a massive nerd like me to be able to use it. And to some extent, that is true. You used to have to configure Home Assistant by writing automations in a text editor using a file format called YAML. But over the past year, the Home Assistant community has really been focused on making it more simple and intuitive to use. This is in part because of a company called Nabucasa. They are a private company that have created some companion products and services that are designed to work alongside Home Assistant. These include a service called Nabucasa Cloud, which gives you easy remote access to your Home Assistant platform when you're outside of your own home network, and some hardware products like the Home Assistant Yellow, which is a smart hub. The revenue from these products and services goes back into funding the development of Home Assistant. Nabucasa has hired software developers, user experience designers, and many other legends who get paid as their day job to make Home Assistant better for everyone. And these are the reasons that Home Assistant is my favorite and preferred smart home system, and the one that I'm gonna be using to automate everything in my new home. I don't need five hubs. I just need this one Home Assistant hub, and it will take care of all of my smart devices and automations. Now, some of you may be thinking, won't matter the one smart home standard to rule them all, solve all of these problems, so you won't need to buy so many hubs? The short answer is no. A lot of smart device manufacturers are only adding Matter support to their hubs, not to the end devices themselves. That means that you'll still need to buy a company's hub in order to use their devices. With Home Assistant, I can buy products from Akara, Zemismart, SwitchBot, or Philips Hue, and they will all work directly with my Home Assistant without any extra hubs. That's because these devices all either use Wi-Fi or a protocol called Zigbee under the hood, which Home Assistant knows how to speak. Home Assistant also knows how to speak Matter, by the way, but that's a topic for another video. So how can you get up and running with Home Assistant? By far the easiest way is to buy one of these Home Assistant yellow smart hubs, which are made by Nabucasa, and they cost about 200 bucks, including delivery. I've put a link of where to buy them in the description below, but it's really as simple as taking it out of the box, plugging it into the power and your network via a cable, and you're good to go. Once it's booted up, you can start configuring it by opening up your web browser and typing in homeassistant.local colon 8123. That works most of the time, but if it doesn't, then you'll need to find the IP address of your Home Assistant Yellow and type that in instead and the port 8123. You should now be greeted with a few setup screens which will guide you through setting up your user account and some location information. It should be fairly easy to follow. Once you're done, you should see that Home Assistant has actually discovered any compatible smart home devices that you already have on your network. And you can click the configure button to set those up right now. The one that I would recommend you set up first is the Zigbee Home Automation Integration, which will let you connect most Zigbee devices like the Akara motion sensor and these Hue light bulbs. Once again, follow the bouncing ball on screen and you'll have a working Zigbee hub that uses the Home Assistant Yellow's built-in Zigbee radio ready to go. We're now gonna pair these two devices to our Home Assistant and create our first automation, which will turn on a light when motion's detected. This is a simple but powerful automation and I use it in so many places all over my smart home. On the integrations page, click on configure on the Zigbee Home Automation Square that probably says yellow. You'll now go down to the blue add device button at the bottom right of the screen, which puts it into pairing mode. This means that any Zigbee device within range is now able to pair to your home assistant. The first thing that we'll do is put our Hue light bulb into the fitting and turn it on. Because the bulb has never been paired with any other Zigbee platform before, it will immediately go into pairing mode. You should now see Home Assistant immediately detect this and add it as a device. Next up, we'll pull the battery tab out of this motion sensor and press the pairing button on the side. Some Zigbee devices also need to be put into pairing mode before they'll connect to anything and this varies from device to device. It's usually a button like this. Once again, it's been immediately detected by Home Assistant and it's paired. Congratulations, you've now got these two devices paired directly with Home Assistant and you didn't even need to buy a Philips Hue Hub nor an Akara Hub, which are things both of those companies will try and sell you by the way. I'll make five hubs at the start of this video had both an Akara and Philips Hue Hub as part of his home automation setup. Absolute madness. 
Anyway, we've got our two devices connected, so now we can start creating our first automation, which will turn this light on when motion is detected. To do this, we go into Settings, and then to Automations, and then the Create Automation button. The first part we need to do is choose a trigger for this automation. What will cause the automation to actually run? There are lots of different options like the time of day, the state of sensors, but we're going to pick device from the list, and then we're going to go find our motion sensor. You can actually rename all of your sensors so you know which motion sensor is which, but I've just left it as default for this example. We then choose what about the device will trigger the automation, and in this case we'll choose when it detects occupancy, which is basically means motion. We'll ignore the conditions part for now, and we'll set up our action what is the automation actually going to do? We'll once again select our device, but in this case we'll pick the hue light bulb. And our action, which is turn the light on. We'll save that automation, and if you wave your hand in front of the motion sensor now, the light should turn on. There you go, your first Home Assistant automation. Wasn't that hard, was it? Obviously, there is so much more to Home Assistant than what I just showed you. I just wanted to highlight that whilst Home Assistant can appear complex and daunting from the outside, it's not actually that complex if you take it one step at a time. There are some great resources available online for all skill levels, and I've made a video in the past that shows you all the different places that you can go to get help and support with setting up Home Assistant or running your automations, and you'll find that linked in the description below. I'll also be continuing to release videos showing you how I create both simple and complex automations using Home Assistant, and how I'm generally using the platform to create the best dang smart home that ever was. If that's something that's interesting to you, then why not subscribe to the channel so that together we can make your home smarter.